Peace, 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 family. How you all doing? I hope all is well with you. My name is Keisha. I'm the owner of Astrologix, and I am your astrology coach. Today, I am going to be doing, uh, starting um, a two different um, series. I'll be doing um, Lilith through the signs and Pluto through the signs. I thought, seeing as it's um, getting ready to be full in uh, Scorpio season, that it would be good to go through these kind of darker themed planets and um, hopefully it helps you get through this time and understand your lower self. And um, what your power is, what, what also empowers you. And so I'll be starting with Lilith and Aries. So this video will be for Lilith and Aries or Lilith in the first house. And um, Aries is the ruler uh lives in the first house and it's ruled by Mars. And so Mars is action, assertive, competitive, leadership, independence, courage. It can be self-centered and patient and have a temper. Um because Mars is kind of a destructive planet this can also be like guns, weapons, violence, fire. Um, and any kind of authority figure, right? And so this tends to come with some very destructive behaviors. Um, Aries is the self ego and your identity, your head, your body, and your self-esteem, how you feel about your body, your appearance, and how you show up to others. The first house is how we um, perceive the world and how people perceive us as individuals. And Lilith, um, if you don't know the story is, was the first wife of Adam and they were made equal. They had the same equal amount of independence, power, skill. And um, Adam wanted to dominate her sexually and in other ways. So Lilith ran from the garden of Eden and since she had her own free will, independence, and thoughts, she went and made babies with demons and Lucifer. And so Lilith has a lot to do with shame, guilt, repression, where we're underrepresented, uh, our sexual nature, rebelling, um, being liberated, freedom, manipulation and where you want to be seen, heard, recognized, and loved. And so because of the Mars destructive energy, these people are competitive and destructive. They have a warlike energy. They're angry. Um, they have a lot of tension from past issues. They have a lot of dark thoughts. You know, this could have a lot to do with killing, rape, violence, burning your house down, self-centered women. Um, the women can tend to want um, men that they can have power over and men can tend to want to have power over the women that they're with. Um, they're proactive um, risk takers these are your thugs, gangsters, pimps, criminals, OGs, hood legends, drug dealers, robbers, stick up kids, or people who will kind of hit you with something like a bat or a stick. 
Um, the men can be detached, cold, and abusive. Um, these people can be sexually confident, sex addicts. They might tend to want to have sex in kind of more uh, taboo ways, like on your period or in the anus, you know. Um, these people hate rejection. They don't like being controlled. And they're attracted to danger or dangerous situations like being strippers, prostitution, and um, they tend to be a little off kilter when they're on some kind of substance. So any kind of addiction to drugs, these people might be prone to. Now on a more, um, less violent level, um, these people receive a lot of physical attention, good or bad, but it can be hard to be seen beyond your physical appearance. Um, this can lead to insecurities, eating disorders, body dysmorphia, or self-harm. Um, people can perceive you as confident, even if you don't. You attract people who are very raw, who have very raw sexual attentions for you. Ideally, you want to attract respectful, ambitious, and assertive partners, but you get people who are threatened by you, intimidated by you. And if you don't use discernment, you can find yourself in very dangerous, bad situations with immoral people, mean people. Or this is how you are in these situations. It could go both ways. Your insecurities can have you viewing people who are attracted to your body as a deeper meaning, but you end up brokenhearted and feeling taken advantage of. Um, it's important to use your awareness to weed out the lower expressions that people might have for you. You can be hypersexual, um, crave intimacy and validation. Um, these people tend to want to live their own life by their own rules. You might have had an overprotective um, mother or parent or she didn't let you live to your fullest potential. You might have been shamed or rejected around your sexual, your personal um, expression. So this is like somebody who wasn't taught how to have conversations around sex. Or if you did, it would come up as, you know, maybe calling you out your name, like you're, you're a hoe or you know, uh, you dress too provocatively from a parent. Um, that kind of brings on these insecurities and doesn't really allow you to see what people are taking advantage of you. Your mom might have made you feel embarrassed about how you looked, how you expressed yourself. She may have you. You may have experienced abuse at a young age, and um. Your mother might have projected on you a lot, uh, especially if she went through some kind of abuse at a young age. Um, ideally, you hope your mom is trying to protect you, but uh, instead you get jealousy, uh, jealous, childish, um, codependent parent or mom. This matured you quickly, made you see people as emotionally unavailable. And unfortunately, because of that, you will, you might have experienced a lot of pain that breaks you into um, extremely high levels of discernment. You'll begin to, begin to notice the pattern and behaviors that make you a warrior and very competitive. 
On the other hand, you can have really poor boundaries, making you more likely to be open to being taken advantage of. There are some things that are out of your control, like when you're a child, but after a certain age, you know, it becomes your responsibility to make changes, to recognize things you allow to happen to you. And that can be kind of tough. It can be a tough lesson. Uh, you might have to repeatedly go through some kind of heartbreak, disappointment, shame or embarrassment around your sexual encounters or relationships you have with partners in order to learn this lesson. Once you change, um, your life changes. You'll get a reputation of being hypersexual, even if you're not, because of your sex appeal. People will be jealous of you because of your body. You will bring out the worst in people who hate you and envy you because of their insecurities. You become a mirror for people to see how much they hate themselves and end up projecting it onto you. You may have more public embarrassments that hits you on a deeper level. And people will attack you not aware of the internal battle you're facing. But you have the ability to inspire others. The way you express yourself unapologetically really does inspire others to do the same. You can experience amazing sexual experiences that uplift you in ways some people will never experience. No one can lie to you. And because people do have an unhealthy attachment to you, your ability to dodge bullets is priceless. Um, you might do some kind of like uh, protest due to your appearance. So this is like people who will wear things where they have, um, you know, these kind of sayings on their clothes, like, um, I don't know why I think of, uh, what's the girl's name with the bald head, the blonde hair, where she did the slut walk? I can't remember her name, but, you know, people who are kind of bold and stand up for something, and they might do it through their appearance or the clothing that they wear. Uh, or like Nipsey Hussle or Prince, even Billy Irish done some kind of pretty cool things like that. I feel like a lot of people have, but um, you're a role model simply by doing what you want. You're a natural leader. You make people feel good about themselves just by being yourself. As usual, then, this is my interpretation of Lilith and Aries. I hope this information helped you. Peace.